Mr. Bergeron on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. So, isn't that amazing? <laughs> um, I, I, I had first seen that presentation, I just said, it's just so important that people know all of this stuff. And by the way, I know in, in, the, uh, in the handouts that you've got, I think you also have a page that gives you our YouTube channel. Um, with this program, we're, we, you know, we're, we're, we're taping it and we're hoping it'll be on Framingham Cable, maybe even on Ashland Cable. Um, <laughs> but in addition to that, we've, I have a YouTube channel now, we're uploading all of these programs that I do onto the YouTube channel so that you can go back and watch it. Or if you know somebody that is interested in these issues, just tell them about it so they'll be able to see the show. So I asked Steve Greenberg to come to talk about reverse mortgages. The rules regarding reverse mortgages just changed a lot. So some of the things that you thought you <coughs> may have known about reverse mortgages have just changed. Um, they, once again, they are an important alternative. I've, you know, I, what it, my, my suggestions to people when I talk about reverse mortgages is do them as late as possible in life because the older you are, the more you can borrow, basically, the more you can, you can make available to yourself through the reverse mortgage. Uh, and don't do them to live on because sometimes you run out of money. I've had clients have that happen. I, have a, uh, I do a lot of work on Martha's Vineyard. I have a group of clients who um, did reverse mortgages 10 or 15 years ago with regular payments to themselves, and they were u doing it because they wanted to just maintain a higher s daily or monthly standard of living through those checks. But now the checks are out, and they're not dead. And they have a real problem, a real problem, right? Their house is secure, but they can't pay in terms of the mortgage, but they can't pay the taxes, and they can't pay the insurance, and it's, that's a problem. On the other hand, if, you know, to the extent that you've got limited savings, and you want a way to make sure that your house is safe, a reverse mortgage can really be an, I an ideal vehicle. So Steve, talk about reverse mortgages. So let me get my logistics set here for a second. Which, uh, this is where I'm using the phone. That's there, forward. There oh, we go. that's forward. Sorry, 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 sorry. So that's that's forward. He's bringing me backwards. So I, I guess I'm reverse anyway. So. For reference, for reference purposes, we got a house, we got an IRA, we got a bank account, total values. You got Frank and Mary who are living on those assets. And the question is, do you need a reverse mortgage? Thank you very much for taking the time today to join us. We really appreciate that. Hopefully you're gonna gain a whole lot of information. As Art said, my name is Steven Greenberg. My sole focus since 2005 has been on reverse mortgages. I first started with Bank of New York, then went to MetLife Bank. Currently I'm with iReverse Home Loans, which is a subsidiary of Hopkins Federal Savings Bank, and I run an individual branch out of Worcester. So, what, you know, we have a whole lot to cover today. As I said, there have been some recent changes. What I'm going to do is, you know, give you a good highlight, a good overview of the program and how it works. I encourage you to write down any questions that you have, and after this, I'll be certainly available to answer those questions for you. So, we'll start right from the beginning and say, what the heck is a HECM? A HECM is a home equity conversion mortgage. Home Equity Conversion Mortgage. And that is the reverse mortgage that is federally regulated and fe federally insured. It is regulated by HUD and it's insured by FHA. What, the re what a HECM allows you to do, it, it allows you to reside in your home. It's a program for folks that are 62 and over. and allows you to access a portion of the value of your home in order to maintain your life there in order to stay put, as I like to say. A lot of us just want to do that. The proceeds that you gain from a reverse mortgage are tax-free proceeds. Nothing goes on a 1040, nothing goes on in any IRS form when it becomes tax time. And the simple reason for that is, is this is a loan. This is a mortgage. You are taking proceeds from the mortgage. It is not income. So therefore, it is not taxable. No monthly payments on a reverse mortgage. There are no required monthly payments. If you choose to make payments, you certainly can. That option is available to you. But um, no required payments at all. The interest 
on a reverse mortgage, the interest deduction. You know, those of you that are still carrying a conventional mortgage or had in the past, you know that on a yearly basis, you get to deduct your um, interest on that mortgage. With a reverse mortgage, because you're not making payments, you do not have that ability to do so. Where that advantage comes in is at the time you sell the home. At the time that the mortgage is paid in that particular year, whether you sell it yourself or you have passed away and your estate is settling the mortgage, and that particular year is when either you or your estate will gain the benefit of that tax deduction, that interest tax deduction. And obviously, you want to speak with your tax advisor, your accountant, about how this works. As I said, there's, and you will have no need to repay the loan. A reverse mortgage works exactly like a conventional mortgage. When you take out a conventional mortgage, as you did most likely when you purchased your home, the bank put a lien on your property, they gave you the money. When you sold that home, you paid back what you owed to the bank, and you kept the rest. The exact same process works with the reverse mortgage. The bank is going to put a lien on your property, give you access to the dollars. At your demise, or when you sell the home, is when it gets paid back. Living in place. We all know the buzzwords aging in place. It is what has become the norm. Um, I prefer to put a little twist on it because I like to live. We all want to live in place. None of us want to kind of sit home and sit in a chair and age a little bit. We want to live there. And this is just another way of doing it. And if we look at things in various studies, upwards of 85% of us want to do just that, want to stay put. Like Frank and Mary, the vast majority of us have limited resources to do so. And with those limited resources, we have the difficulties of paying taxes, paying insurance, if we need to bring in supportive services into the home, whether it be you know, social type services, whether it be medical type services. Um, and there's always the reluctance to, to tap home equity in order to pay for this. The good news, and I'm going to bring you back to the top, is we're living longer. At the turn of the, of the 20th century, I have to get my centuries correct here, in the early 1900s, the average lifespan was, believe it or not, only 49 years. We take a look at today, and long gone are the days when we retired at 62 and we passed away at 62 in a day. We all grew up hearing those stories. These days, we can spend 30 years in retirement. So the bad news to all this is that we're all living longer. Living longer, there is a cost to doing that. There's the assisted living, nursing homes, if, we de if you decide to move in with family, or if you decide to stay put, there is a cost in doing that. So the question becomes, and what we're trying to answer and give you a few options on today is, how do I pay for that? How do I maintain that so I can stay at home and live in place? What can the money be used for? It can really be used for anything that you want. It's your money. There are no restrictions put upon how you can use the money. One of the most popular things is to retire your conventional mortgage. The, the difference between having a comfortable retirement and an uncomfortable retirement is not thousands of dollars per month. It's hundreds of dollars per month. Maybe 500, maybe 400, maybe 800. It's not thousands of dollars per month. So one strategy is by using the reverse mortgage to pay off your conventional mortgage, what you're doing is instead of sending that payment to the bank every month, that payment's now staying in your pocket. So now life has become a little bit easier. How many of you, you know, just think of it, if you had an extra, if your mortgage payment was $800 a month, 
How far would that $800 a month take you now if that payment was able to stay in your pocket to maintain paying your bills, maintain your property, doing some modifications? Another one is just what we're talking about today, is home accessibility improvements. The very first reverse mortgage that I closed was in Millbury in 2005 and was for a woman who was in a wheelchair who had her caregivers that lived with her and she only had access through the back, the side door of her house where the deck was and the wheelchair <coughs> ramp was. The front of her house was one of those, there was about 30 steps to get up to the front, so that may have even been tough for you. So, and what was happening is, is the deck was literally falling off the house. The wheelchair ramp was in terrible repair. So we came in, we did a reverse mortgage, and at the same time, their car was on its last leg, so they needed to get around a little bit more also. So, we did this reverse mortgage, put a brand new deck on the side of the house, a brand new wheelchair ramp, they got themselves a really nice secondhand car, and life became good again. So home accessibility, you know, I'm not gonna go through every single different use of these, there are various ones listed here. Um, one that's not listed here, which is, you know, very interesting when you get creative in how you can use these, is that 90 days ago, um, we closed the reverse mortgage in New York to settle a divorce. So the use can be far and spread. <laughs> so you're not really trapped. You can really get out after all these, you know, we don't want to go there. <laughs> so as again, I'm not gonna go through all the different uses, but you know, there are a tremendous amount of uses. Consumer safeguards, this is a federal program. It's run by HUD. They set all the rules and all the regulations. They tell us as the lending industry what we can do and what we can't do. The most important safeguard, I feel, though, is that anybody that is going to do a reverse mortgage must speak with an independent HUD counselor about the program. It's a extremely important part of the step. I think it's fantastic. The reason why they do this is one, they want to make sure that you understand the program. They want to make sure that you're being led down the right road. More importantly, they want to make sure that they're not dealing with somebody that has cognitive issues, Alzheimer's, something to that effect. Um, without doing, once you do the counseling, you're given a certificate of completion. Without that certificate saying that you've done the counseling, we can't even sign an application. You can't move forward. So if the counselor feels that there are issues that need to be addressed, this process gets stopped in its tracks and we address those issues as they need be. So the way the process would work is, you know, you would sit down, we would sit down, we would talk, we would discuss everything, I would tell you everything from A to Z, how things work. If you decide you want to proceed, we cannot sign an application at that point. You must speak with the independent HUD advisor. And that's typically about an hour to an hour and a half phone call. You can do that over the phone. If you choose to do so face to face, there are places where you can go and do that face-to-face -face also, but extremely, extremely important part of the process. So how do they figure out how much money they're going to give you? 